so, so deaf. Helped Atlanta get on the map. JD was the first person to make Atlanta really pop. His train of thought was different than the average CEO. Because he had a variety of artists. Most labels were focused on rap or just focused on R&B. He was able to do them both. Wow, man. That, that's a clip from one of the most informative, interesting um, documentaries I've watched in a long time, Heather B. As a hip-hop historian, a lot of times we see a lot of platforms putting out um, these documentaries. And it's really a content grab. Right. You know, it's just, let's give it a, a title that says hip-hop in it. You know, let's get a few talking heads to speak, yeah. speak on some moments. Let's throw it together, patch it up. We ain't going to fill in the voids. We're not going to really give you a deep dive into the context of what was happening at the time, which yeah. is so important because you, you can look at something on paper, but if you weren't there to fill it, mm -hmm. you know, you may not realize its impact. And then I got a chance to watch Power, Influence, and Hip Hop, The Remarkable Rise of So So Deaf. And here's the interesting thing, which um, launched in um, 1993. I was there. Right, <laughs> you know, right. You know, you, you know what I mean? I was there playing crisscross yeah. in in the bay area in northern california saying damn who's this yeah. you know i was there playing the brat when yeah. functify came right, out and was right. like what the hell who is this i was there mm -hmm. when escape came out and we're like what the who is this where's right. all of this stuff coming from and then realizing that it was jermaine dupree who um little john i actually met little john um before i met jd and and him and I used to hang out a lot, and he spoke nothing but high praises of you. So I've always looked up to you, uh, or, or, or admired you for what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Being from the West Coast, you know, we had to fight, scrap, uh, you know, Everything. pull and crawl to get to the point where we were. Yeah. And I had empathy for Southern artists because Southern artists couldn't get airplay anywhere else other than the South at that time. It they, was they, blocked out. They were blocked out. Absolutely. You know, and so that's why we start. I remember playing Outkast for the first time and going, man, they got some shit popping in Atlanta. But you made it all make sense. And I'm so happy that this doc is happening. He's been on the show a thousand times, and I, I've given him some great introductions, I think. Um, but watching this, man, I, I hit you last night and said yeah, thank you. Totally, totally. <laughs> I was, I, it was surprising. Yeah, I was totally surprised. I was sitting in, I was in Dumbo mm -hmm. at the Dumbo house last night, and you hit me. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, because the crazy part is, this is the first time that I got. I got nervous about this documentary okay. when you hit me. Uh -huh. So I'm like, oh, people actually seeing it yeah. before it come on. So now it's getting critiqued, and I'm like, oh man, I hope people <laughs> like this. And yeah. you hit, but you hit me, you gave me, but you made me start thinking like, okay, I wonder what what this next person gonna think, mm -hmm. what this person. What, but you definitely you definitely put me in a space. So thank a you. Absolutely, thank you. Jermaine Dupree is here, ladies Woo! and gentlemen. The goat. The See? goat. <laughs> See? see that? See when, when? See, I remember years ago we was talking about that, and you was telling people you had to tell people, "Hey, listen, man, I'm a greatest of all time." Remind them. You yeah. know, you can say whoever you want, but you got to say me too. You watch this doc; it makes sense. Um, congratulations on Thank everything you. you've Thank done. You. Thank you. You're so open and honest in this doc. Yeah. You know, and there's so many great testimonials hearing Usher talk about the Confessions album, mm -hmm. and and hearing how some of those songs were written. Um, and in particularly, um, when you expressed how um, you were riding down, I want to say, was it La Cienica, mm -hmm. and you were near the Beverly Center, yeah. and, and while you were driving, you were coming up with um, lyrics. And I don't know if people realize how much of the music you produced that you actually wrote lyrics. Yeah, that's 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 one of the things I wanted to make sure was in this that uh -huh. people saw that process because a lot of people don't know that and they don't pay attention to it they thought they get they get lost in other parts of my career as opposed to paying attention to that and i remember when i was talking about when i got inducted into the songwriters hall of fame it was a lot of people like why why he get to go second uh-huh and i and i you know that just kept playing back in my head when we was doing this doc like let's make sure they understand why I got to be second, and you know. Okay, so let's let's understand this with Criss Cross. All those major hits that Criss Cross had, JD was pinning them. Correct. Yeah, yeah I wrote that entire album. That entire album, Escape. Uh, I wrote the whole entire album. The you first wrote, one. The first entire album. Okay, Emancipation of Mimi. I didn't write the whole song, but you know, majority of that we we was written between me and Mariah and Jonte Austin. Okay. Uh, oh wait, wait. 
uh, what I mean, what can I get your number? Was like all like a lot of me. That was a lot of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and John Tay Austin is a part of the Ocean Seven. Yeah, yeah right. And yeah, so this yeah. is a group of individuals that you wrote and produced with. Yeah, it's my crew. You know, uh, me, Trey Songs, Usher, Brian Cox, John Tay, Tyrone. We the we the Ocean Seven. You the Ocean Seven. Yeah. And then you even said that because of I can't think of what was some, the song you wrote for Usher uh, that you think. It pretty much led to his breakup with Chili. Yeah, so I, that's what I wanted people to see that writing the way Confessions was written that okay. I didn't have no picture of Chili in the car with me. I wasn't looking at no girl. <laughs> okay. I wasn't, you know what I mean? I was riding down the street, leaving the studio. Because uh-huh. I had actually left the studio because we came up with the track and I left the studio and I couldn't come up with the lyrics in the studio. I was at Brandon's way and we couldn't I couldn't come up with the lyrics at the studio. I had the hook though. Mm-hmm. I had everything that I've been doing is all bad. I got a trick on the side with a crib and a ride. I've been telling so many lies. I had all of that, but I had to get the verse. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to and I was I was leaving, going back home. I was driving and I was just looking and I was like, uh. Every time I was in LA, I was with my ex girlfriend. I was just looking around like this started coming to me. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And so you 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 the reason they broke up? No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. He talked his way out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> this this documentary is like putting me as the reason for a bunch of things. Because yesterday I had an interview and it, it, the lady said, "So Scooter Brunt said that you taught him everything. So you did you tell him to buy?" Taylor Swift's masters and I'm oh like look gosh. I didn't do this yeah yeah right like you, you would know, be criminalized you're, you're the reason that he did this huh I'm like no nah, I didn't do this <laughs> Damn. Like, yeah. but but what do you think of that I mean it's all fair in business that he was able oh, yeah, to 100%. Scoop. yeah so it wasn't really nothing as a business person wasn't nothing wrong with him acquiring no nah, I mean uh, from, me look, from the outside looking in you know I'm not I'm not right on the front of it but I spoke to him about it but it just I'm looking from the outside looking in it just looked like you know nothing malicious was done it was like if it was up for sale and you mm. got the money, it's, that's what we supposed to do. Yeah, that's what business is. That's, that's what business is. Scooter Brian, you'll find out, got his start on uh, working under JD because JD saw him promoting a lot of clubs and being uh, immersed in the culture, and then hired him to his company as a what a marketing guy. Yeah, yeah because you know, um, it's interesting because I hear a lot of when the white people do interviews, they always talk about. Um, um, diversity in their company. Mm-hmm. Well, I had an all black company that needed diversity. Mm-hmm. You know, I had one white one one white lady that worked at my company, and I I um I felt like you know Atlanta to me was too segregated. You know, it's, it is what it is. But all the places that I was going, like on the West Coast, L.A., here in New York, you go to these clubs, it's like. The music is played and everybody's listening to the music. In Atlanta, it's like a white club, black club. Mm-hmm. The same music in play. So I'm like, why are these people not together? Right? So then I start trying to find people that understood the co- togetherness, mm-hmm. not separation. And that led me to meeting Scooter Braun. And he was having parties on Emory um, that was together. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I want you a part of my company so we can spew this into the rest of the city. You always had this foresight, you know, this vision. You did the same thing in terms of becoming like a mediator, if you will, or a connector uh, when it came to on the West Coast and the East Coast so-called rivalry. I say so-called because I felt like it was manufactured by by publications. I was there. Yeah. Nobody had a problem with the East Coast like that. It was just competition. It wasn't like murderous. 100%. And, um, And Snoop talked about how you brought him and Diddy together on a uh, Welcome to Atlanta remix. Yeah. And at that time, man, it was just such a fever pitch going on with that tension between the East and West Coast. Mm-hmm. Um, but you doing that kind of cemented Atlanta as being that middle ground, that safe zone, didn't matter what coast you were from. Is that why you did it? No, nah, I think I think I did it sub you know, subconsciously without okay. even knowing. Uh, because, you know, one of the things that, that always has bothered me is that at the Source Awards, when Outkast said what they said, right, it almost felt like they didn't include me. You know? Okay, who Outkast? Yeah. When they said the, the South, South has something, something to say. say. Yeah, yeah, right? Because, when Andre went to the Accepted because, Award. Yeah. B- because me and Brat performed. Uh huh. So the South was represented that night. 
but it was almost as like the South didn't get a representation that uh-huh. night, right? Uh-huh. So then we felt like if I felt like I was an outcast, like yo, uh-huh. wait, what? Y'all overlooking the fact that I'm from Atlanta? I'm I'm from Atlanta. Yeah, I represent Atlanta, and Atlanta was represented on the stage tonight. Uh-huh. We perform along with Snoop and Biggie. So I always just felt like, um, I felt like people kind of was like weren't paying attention to the fact that I've been in this in that in that mix of them arguing and fighting and this bickering back and forth between Bad Boy and Death Row. So so Death was in the middle of that from the jump. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like the you know, I told this story on 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 Drink Champs when when the fight between Puff and Shug started at my birthday party. I remember this. You yeah. know what I mean? So so um, not that I wanted to be a part of it, but it it was it was I I always feel like people kind of overlook the fact that me and Brat was there representing for what the South was supposed to be at that point. But then people started looking at it like they wanted it to be something different. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So I think subconsciously, when I had an opportunity to do this 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 Welcome to Atlanta remix, I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood Atlanta went with New York and LA and this and it was important that people paid attention to that. Mm. So that's I had an opportunity to put that light on it at that point. Mm-hmm. But I feel like a lot of times the stuff that I was doing, even like Criss Cross, Criss Cross don't get credit for putting Atlanta on the map. Mm-hmm. And you know, you can't sell eight million records. I don't care what age you are, you yeah. can't sell eight million records and people don't give you the credit. Yeah. Like yeah. these boys is from it. They was from Atlanta. Uh-huh. They went to school in Atlanta. They are Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? They they the fact that they weren't drug dealers and this new Atlanta makes people kind of not pay attention to it because mm-hmm. they weren't. They didn't. They didn't. They weren't the description of what people see now. But they definitely were from Atlanta. Just like uh um. Arrested Development. I feel mm. like Arrested Development don't get that credit too. They was there too. Like yeah. you saying, you was there. There's a lot of artists that came from the city that a lot of people didn't put the Atlanta stamp on. Mm-hmm. And even in Atlanta, though, right? Yeah, even it, in Atlanta. It, yeah, this is still an argument in Atlanta about what? Wow, yeah. What, yeah. That, what, are, what is Atlanta arguing about? <laughs> I mean, I saw this like like a week ago. It was like yeah. an argument about it, and then I think Pastor Troy was really like disturbed by because he wasn't high on the list. And then uh-huh. Pastor Troy has a right because he he definitely was one of these guys that was the first to do street Atlanta music, mm-hmm. Atlanta street music. Um, but as far as the popularity and people paying attention to the city and saying, I'm going to come out there because I think it has an opportunity. I don't know nobody that was doing it like us. Like so so deaf. Yeah. Um I mean it it is it's it's it's, it's, it's in the it's in the it's in the history books. You know Bad Boy came to Atlanta yeah. and, and 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 tapped into that vibe. Biggie wanted that Atlanta vibe as well. I think mm-hmm. the other thing about it is that that you know um I I'm the only label from Atlanta mm-hmm. that never got help from nobody else in hip hop. What does that mean? Like um nobody in hip hop like so like Ludacris was signed to Def Jam South. Okay. That means that you you reap the benefits from Russell Simmons, you reap the benefits from Leo Coin, okay. you reap the benefits from Kevin Lowes. Um Outkast's first video was shot and directed by Puff Daddy. Mhm. You know what I'm saying? So they was taking energy from things that was already going in different places. So So Death was Jermaine Dupri by himself. By himself. Your father had a, played a major role. Yeah, but I'm saying, I'm talking about somebody, somebody from, from hip-hop. hip-hop. Okay. Yeah, I'm talking about somebody from hip-hop. You know, like Donnie Arna and people at Columbia, my dad and mm-hmm. Ian Burke, that's in the thing. Those guys definitely was helping, but I'm talking about the help of hip-hop. Okay. Like, you know, like if you look at like, even the rappers now, like everybody that comes from Atlanta, they run out to get signed to a major. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is true. I was fighting Def Jam. I, I got sued by Def Jam because it was called So So Def. We was in a fight. I was never, I, I was so anti being a part of any of them companies. I was like, it's me. This is me. This is what it is. I'm from Atlanta. I'm going to war with anybody that's out here. And I didn't have no help. I didn't mm-hmm. have no Jimmy Iovine. I didn't mm-hmm. have no... Uh, I mean, Donnie Donny Donny was there, yeah. but these guys allowed me to do whatever I wanted to do. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't no, they weren't part of the construction of building So So Death, right? So um, 
I think a lot of that plays a major part in it because you know when you out here solo cowboy, yeah, you know it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. It's extremely hard. And you miss a lot of you miss you miss getting a lot of credit when you're like a solo cowboy. Uh huh. And I, and I, it's not like I did it deliberately. I'm just telling people my story that I didn't have that helping hand like a Kevin Lowes never. I didn't have these people. Uh, it, so let me ask you: You were at 19 years of age. You were already a millionaire, and you talk about um, um, kind of losing it all. I don't know if you lost it all, but you know we all heard about your tax problems. Yeah. And then um, you talked about you were buying everything in cash, and the IRS came and started taking all your cars. Yeah. And all your uh, possessions. I'm assuming that might have been your lowest point. At so so death was it? Nah, that wasn't. Damn, nah, we got lower than that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah. I, well, I mean, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, well, yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. I guess it was a lower point, but I, you know, I I kind of understood what was happening. Okay. But I didn't understand what was happening, right? What, what because do you mean? it's like you know, like you know, if you have a tax bill, and they waiting on their check, and then you start getting more new shit. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then it's like, mm-hmm. whoa. Didn't we just tell you you owe us? <laughs> <laughs> what? We just seen a brand new Hummer come to your house. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, I did. Yeah, I ain't buy it. It's like start. They start trying to figure out what's going on. So it was like it was more or less a learning situation than a down point. Okay. I think like it's it's in the media is a down point, but for me it was just like, oh, okay, this is this what this is what happens, right? Mm-hmm. You know, like nobody told me. The morning that I woke up, I woke. I flew back from LA. I'm gonna tell you, flew back from LA, and I was like, I'm. I want a Ferrari today. And I went to the Ferrari dealership, and I took the Ferrari guy, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars uh, check. Okay. He looked at the check like it was fake, and was like, "Yo, you know, we don't take checks. We need a cashier's check." So I went back to the bank, got a two hundred fifty thousand dollars cashier's check, and took it back to the dude. Uh huh. And I gave them two hundred fifty thousand dollars cash, basically, to get this Ferrari. You know, the IRS seen that. That shit was like a, a firework. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, alarm. What is this dude? What is he doing? Yeah, this yeah. is this dude doing selling drugs. Like it was like. By the way, nobody else in Atlanta was doing this. You got to think about yeah. When when this is yeah, I'm atmosphere. doing this when nobody else is doing this. Uh-huh. This is. It's just fireworks. It's not even like it's. That's why I say it wasn't really like a down point. It's just a learning situation because I ain't had nobody around me to be like, "Yo, dog, don't do it like that." Yeah, you yeah. can't do it like you could give them thirty thousand dollars. They'll give yeah. you the same car. You know that, right? <laughs> okay. I ain't know that. Uh-huh. I wasn't thinking like that. I'm like, I want the car right now. I don't want you know. You know what I'm saying? And I'm thinking like I don't want no car <laughs> payments. Yeah. I'm thinking right. You but, think you're doing it but, correctly? But yeah. If you give them all that money. You send it off all kind of alarms. So then I was doing the exact same thing. So I paid for, ca- I paid, so I had a tax bill, right? Mm-hmm. I paid the tax bill off, cash. They want to know where you get the money, where you get the money to pay us off, and you got to pay taxes on that money too. <laughs> Damn. I'm like, oh. oh my wow. God. Okay, all right, I see what this is. This is, this is a game. Yeah. This is a game where you ain't supposed to do it like this. That it's you know you you it's a it's a thing. It's you a got, system. Yeah, it's a it's system. A, yeah. So you know you just gotta learn. You know what I mean? It's just learning situation. This is something I had to learn, go through. Um, it was interesting going through it, like I said, because it's like <laughs> I would I it, it didn't stop me. Uh huh. It just was like you know I just paid out more money than I ever thought I would ever pay. I thought buying five hundred dollar sneakers was something. Yeah. Yeah, you know, you yeah. give somebody a million dollar check that just came to your house, you really oh. mad. You mad, the Jermaine Dupri? <laughs> it was real. I <laughs> throw up all over myself. Wealthy, a couple man, other huh? things, man. Um, I didn't realize how close you were to Big. Well, I knew you were close to Big, but I didn't know that you were nearly about to get into the the SUV that he ultimately lost his life in. Yeah. yeah. You, um, and you tell that story on the dock. Um, I was curious too. What was your relationship like with Tupac? If you had one with Tupac as well. My my relationship with Tupac was earlier, you okay. know, because I was on the Fresh Fest and Tupac actually happened to get a couple of shows um, um, with Digital Underground. Before Tupac even made a record, I knew Tupac. Yeah. So he was out, you know, working with Digital Underground, and we, we knew each other from there. When Tupac started turning into Tupac, uh-huh. um, we didn't really talk that much. We saw each other on pass and we said, what's up? But it wasn't like me and Big. The difference with me and Big was that when... Juicy first came out. It was three top records that was out, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Flavor in your ear, 
Functified, and Juicy. These was the three new records that was coming out. So these three people was going on the road with each other. Craig Mack, me and Brat, and, and Big. Um, Big's record out of the three records was the least favorable, mm -hmm. especially in Atlanta. Juicy wasn't getting no play in Atlanta. Um, people weren't, you know, because... A rapper rapping over just a break, yeah, or or, or an old record in Atlanta wasn't that, especially it had no eight oh eight in it. Uh -huh. It was it was just done like this. The record we gonna rap over this record, so it didn't have anything to like grab people from Atlanta. So big, he saw the success of so you know of Functified, and he was just like, yo, I need one of them records, uh -huh. and that was his entry, you know, his entrance to talking to me, and me and him just started talking, and he was like, man, you gotta make me one of them beats, uh -huh. you gotta make me one of them beats. So, um, a lot of things started happening. So I gave him a beat, and the beat didn't make his record. So he took the beat, and he gave the beat to Little Kim, which became Not Tonight on her album. Oh. So that's when I did. That's how I did that song. Uh -huh. Um. And he wrote to that beat, and he just was like, he loved every record that I ever wrote for Criss Cross. He wanted a song that sounded just like all of them songs. So uh -huh. he was just like, yo, you got to make a record. So when Big Papa came out, and, and they, him and Puff, they started talking about doing a remix, he was like, JD got to do the remix, because he wanted to be, he wanted to he be wanted in the South. He, yeah. wanted, he wanted that sound. So he came, him and Mark Pitts came to Atlanta for the first time, um, and we re-recorded Big Papa. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't just do a remix So you changed the music Like I actually redid the whole record He re-rapped the song Changed the verse The second verse and everything We made a whole new song Of this record um, And then In that same day After we finished that He was like Where Brad at? I was like She upstairs And she stayed at my house And she was right upstairs He's like Call her down here So I called Brad downstairs He's like We gonna make a record right now too so then we made the B side. Damn. We made all these records in one day, oh, nice. and we just we 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 created this bond between us that were like he felt like I was just I knew exactly where he wanted to go, uh -huh. and he felt like I had the key to where he wanted to go. So he was really like JD man, you know. Yeah. And then we talked about his writing because what Big did with Junior Mafia was the exact same thing I that yeah. did with Criss Cross. He just took people and he wrote the records and he made them rap and it, and and we know them as Junior Mafia. Yeah. So me and him had the same these had these conversations cuz he was like I I could do that. I'm going to do the same thing you did with Criss Cross. Like it was like a whole just me and him we just had a whole bunch of conversations but it was all creative. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So that night that night he was just being the, a bigger man because you know he's like you know la if you know la yeah. in this era of time la was on fire and it was like you was like this at all times yeah, you looking around you don't know what was going to happen but you knew something was going to happen right so we came out of the place his car pulled up and he was like jd you can't stand out here this la you know you can't just be standing outside i'm like Nigga, I'm from Atlanta. I ain't got nothing. I'm not from New York. I yeah. ain't part. I ain't, they, they ain't gonna. End, they ain't got me a part of that. And mm -hmm. he was like, I don't want to hear that. You part of what we doing? So get in the car. So in the midst of me getting ready to get in the car, you know, I have to fold the seats down and all that. That process of getting in them trucks. Then my car pulled up. And then moments later, you heard the gunshots. Yeah, they car wow. pulled off. And as soon as I, was, everybody's getting in my car, I heard the shots. Wow, Jermaine Dupri is here. Power, influence, and hip hop. The remarkable rise of Soul Soul Death is premiering tomorrow. Uh, that's tomorrow, yeah. July eighteenth yeah. on uh, We TV. No, that's next week. Oh, next, next week. week. No, okay. We. Oh <laughs> shit! I've been at the Essence. You know, man, I ain't even here today mm -hmm. uh, on We TV. Real quick, uh, you mentioned the brat. One of the things that the brat really expressed and bow wow to and i don't know if any of us really realized the depth of your relationship with janet jackson but she even said that even still today she wished you guys got back together because of the nature of your relationship interesting yeah and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well janet's single now man if it, if it was possible would you consider it i don't know mm. i don't know want me to call and ask her yeah <laughs> Put her on the speaker. Uh, yeah. Put her on the speaker. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, yeah. all right. Um, I thought that part was interesting too. Yeah, you, it's so many gems in this doc. Mariah mm -hmm. Carey talking about her situation at home. At home, feeling she was free, but she felt like she was living in a prison. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> you not visiting the brat when she was in prison. Yeah, 
you know, do you have any, you know, I hate using the words regrets, but is it anything you would have done differently in your past that uh, moving forward? Chris that, Kelly situation. Yeah, Chris Kelly, you didn't, you felt like if you had spoken with him, perhaps maybe he would still be here today. Yeah, I mean, you know, I would, that that part I definitely feel like I regret. Um, the the I regret the business of allowing the business to be so big that you can't pay attention to the small things. Yeah. Because we built this. Crisscross, me and my, me and Crisscross, we built this as a conversation, right? And these guys was at my house every day for two years straight, right? Mm -hmm. And then every day is like, you know, we're questioning, we're watching videos, and we're questioning, we cutting our eyebrows off, we dyeing our hair, we braiding our hair, we putting our clothes on backwards, we doing everything possible that we can think of to become stars and celebrities and all of this and then all of a sudden they become huge mm -hmm. and then they gone right and then i start paying attention to the fact that they're big i gotta do it again so then i'm gone right so then it's just like this empty space like that space that we filled was nobody there at that point i'm over here making escape mm -hmm. they over here being superstars they grow up they grow up, they start growing up without me being around them. So they start living a different life. They start getting into other things that I wasn't even knowing that they was into. So it's just like a, it's like a, um, it's, it's crazy because I think God does this to teach you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So with Bow Wow, you know, when Bow Wow gets in trouble and, you know, people talk, even when you see us on Growing Up Hip Hop and Brad is always like, yo, you JD, you, you always, you just baby Bow Wow. It, that baby in him comes from me not letting go of him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to deal with none of the dumb shit that he be doing but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i also know that if i turn my back the same possible thing, thing could, could happen, happen. Mm. you know what i'm saying so you can't you can't let you can't let go of people regardless of how you know ignorant or whatever else it is that's going on like i, I learned that from like i don't know the insides and outs from what what dmx but i know dmx been in jail a lot of times mm -hmm. <laughs> since I've been paying attention and every time he come home Swiss is right there with him and yeah. they in the studio and it's like Swiss don't it's like Swiss not paying no attention to whatever got him locked up he's just paying attention to what got him to the name that we know yeah. right and that's the same thing I feel like I have to do with all my artists so when even with Brat when Brat went to jail I feel like when people go to jail you start echoing that darkness yeah i ain't want to see her like that uh -huh. i ain't want to see her like that i ain't want to i ain't even want to think of her as that type of person uh -huh. you know what i'm saying i had i had people telling me i had i heard we was talking i had lawyers doing what they was doing um uh, trying to get her out and all of that but i did as far as me visually looking at her and saying damn you locked up yeah I got to go see you, and when I leave, you can't come with me. I wasn't, I'm not with that. You're not with that. Yeah. Well, man, hey, listen, don't say it all. I want people to watch <laughs> this next week, uh, July 18th on WE TV. Uh, Jermaine Dupri and his amazing journey that yeah, you ain't even at halftime yet. That's yeah. the crazy part. <laughs> wow. You ain't yeah. even at halftime. We got a, a song by Cedar. This, you know, I want to play the uh, the new single, uh, but we, we got On It. That's your yeah, new yeah, artist, yeah, right? On it. Yeah, yeah, And that's yeah. a social deaf artist. Yeah, yeah. And, and I did this record, actually, so, you know. Okay, who's Cedar? Who is Cedar? Um, Cedar's this new kid from the west side mm -hmm. um, of Atlanta. And um, what I like about Cedar is that he actually is, he embodies what what I feel like the city was built on. Okay. Um, actually getting out in the clubs, actually doing what you got to do, and creating and making people pay attention to you, whether it be five people first, then it'd be 100 people the next time, be 500 people the next time, right? Mm -hmm. And it's such organic. It's so organic, and he's so real. And, um, you know, he was a thief. He was, a, you know, he was a kid out here stealing cars and all uh -huh. of that. And he was doing, he was supposed to get five to 20, 20 years or something like that. And I, he said I called him five months after he got out of jail. And I basically saved his life. And, you know, I mean, it's just a, it's just a, it's a real organic story. Uh -huh. And, um, I just like the way it's going. Cedar, C E D A R. Yeah. Look him up. Follow Jermaine Dupree also. You can find him on social at um, Jermaine Dupree Everything. All right, man. Thank you for making this doc, man. You Thank know, because you. your, your history is is my history. 100%. Shit. So I'm looking at that like, damn, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. It felt so good to watch it, man. Thank it you. It felt good Thank to you. watch it. Thank and there's so many things. So it's going to be a part two and a part three because there's so many things that I know of. That haven't even been yeah, talked, been about. talked about. Yeah, yeah so congratulations. Yeah, Jermaine yeah. Dupree, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yep, yep.